The installation of IIS is now complete. One more point before I proceed with the installation of AppV itself. I installed SQL Server onto this server, the same server that I'm about to install the AppV server onto. Now that's not the optimal setup. In a fully scaled enterprise environment, you really should have your SQL databases on a designated SQL Server. But for the sake of a lab environment or a proof of concept, you can install it just on the same server. Okay, I'm going to browse to the MDOP disk. Here I will click on the Microsoft Application Virtualization for Desktops and I'm going to select AppV50 SP1 Server. At the first dialog go ahead and click Install. Now I'm going to select that I accept the license terms. For the Microsoft Updates I'm going to select I don't want to use Microsoft Update and in an enterprise environment that's likely going to be the option you select because typically you manage updates yourself. Okay, I'm going to select to install all of these. Now, if you had set it up optimally for an enterprise environment and you had SQL on a different server, you would not select the management server DB and the reporting server DB here. Instead, you would uncheck them, select next, and then further into the installation wizard, you would be prompted to point to your remote SQL instance and database. I'm going to click next. I'm going to allow it to install to the default location that Microsoft have chosen. I'm going to allow it to use the default uh, instance and also the default uh, database name which is AppV Management. Okay, uh, I can select to allow it to use a service account, a domain service account, or I can allow it to use local computer. Similar for the reporting database, I'm just going to allow it to default. You could change it if you'd like. And again, if you want to use a service account, go ahead. On this dialog screen, you can enter an account which you would like to allow to manage AppV, or you can also use a AD group. So I'm going to use an AD group for my domain. On the bottom of this dialog, uh, you can also submit well, change the website name if you're not happy with what they've got as default. And you also need to select a port to bind to. Okay, I'm happy with this, so I'm going to click Next. Now you can see it's presented the publishing server URL. That's okay with me. Uh, it's giving me a website name for the publishing service. I could change that if I like. I'm fine with it, so I'm going to leave it. And it wants another port to bind the reporting, or sorry, the publishing to. So I'm going to enter that, select next. And this is for the reporting service. Again, you can change the website name and give it a port. Okay, and with that, I am all happy with this. So as you may have realized going through these dialog screens, obviously you require two databases. And you're also going to be need to be mindful that you need to ensure whatever three ports you select for the three web services, they need to be freely available within your environment. Okay, it's ready for install. I'm going to click install. Okay, well while this installs, I'll just fast forward for your convenience again. 
and just like that the AppV management server piece has installed so you'll see under the next steps there's a hyperlink and that's to the URL for the AppV management site so let's hit close let's back out of this you can also find the site you can also find the shortcut on the server itself to the web console. And there you have it. This is the new AppV management console.